Aloha and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World, the only show in Honolulu where we cover topics uh, about veganism and the plant-based diet. We're up to episode 10 and today I have asked uh, the wonderful chef Paul Onishi to return for a part two of Veganize Your World, Confessions of a Food Addict, the next chapter. It is <laughs> with great pleasure I introduce you. Aloha, Aloha. Chef Paul Anishi. Nice to be back. Again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to have you back. How's, how's it been? How's your past two weeks been? Very busy. Very busy, yes. Very busy. Chef uh, Paul is also a vegan chef and instructor, and uh, I'm very grateful that you took the time out to join the show to talk more about this uh, awesome veganism and plant-based diet lifestyle. <laughs> so just to read introduce you chef i um did take another look at your article the article that you wrote in the island vegetarian for the vegetarian society of hawaii um chef paul has two articles in that i believe and one of them you go on to mention if you don't mind i'm going to read um, a paragraph from your article and it says at Ekahi, which is the program that you took that sort of introduced you to this lifestyle. At Ekahi, I learned how to re realistically transition to a plant-based diet, exercise daily, meditate, and practice emotional well-being. I honestly feel as though I've, I have been given a second chance to live and experience life in a very positive way. I also, sorry, I am also very aware that because of my culinary background and training, I've been very blessed to have a renewed passion for the preparation of food and would like very much to extend this passion to others who are struggling in this area. So um, wonderful to hear that you've turned your life around and in particular your health mm -hmm. and you're feeling pretty great of late. Very well said. I can't believe I wrote that. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's very well said. That's why I, I wanted to share it with everyone. So how long have you been um, vegan again, if you don't mind me repeating the question from the last show? Well, I graduated, I think it's going on about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been easy because, you know, did some traveling to Europe and then to Japan. And, of course, the places we visited uh, weren't really... Uh, vegan friendly, or, or maybe I just mm -hmm. didn't find the right places. Right. But I know now that they do exist. You just have to look a little harder to find them. Yeah. I think, the, I think that when you become plant-based or vegan, um, your whole dining experience changes because it, you can't really just go to any restaurant, pick up a menu, and expect to be able to order a, a well-rounded meal. No. Yeah, so that, no, that is something not. that changes. Um, I didn't ask you on the last show, um, you must have lost weight from the time you began your um, program at the Ekahi Clinic until now. Do you mind me asking how much weight you 30 lost? Pounds. Or, 30 okay. pounds. 30 pounds. Yeah. Which... It's interesting because I just went and saw a business associate the other day. When I, I went to shake his hand, he kind of stopped and looked at me. He yes. said, you look so different. Mm -hmm. I said, in a good way. He goes, well, you look like a totally different person now. And, and I said, well, how did I look before? And he said, well, you know, you were always kind of thin, mm. but um, I don't know. And then I said, well, maybe I had a triple chin and more of a beer belly and he said oh well yeah if you say so and I, mm -hmm. I know that was the case mm -hmm. so I've um, kind of cut down two pant sizes and I feel better right. I definitely yeah. feel better mm -hmm. um, that's a su very substantial amount of weight you dropped so. right and with that came the some health ailments that you used to have that you now no longer have or are you in that sense, how is everything well, going? Well, I've been going to um, do routine checkups mm -hmm. with my doctor. And uh, aside from a little acid reflux, probably from a lot of the stress I'm going through, which okay. I need to you know, manage mm -hmm. this part, mm -hmm. um, sure. the, the numbers that I'm showing are pretty amazing, even to those people mm -hmm. that you know, have been monitoring me. So I, I know it, I'm on the right track. And, uh, you know, when you get that kind of feedback, you just 
are more inclined to want to do it. Of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, you look great. I, I honestly can't imagine you 30 pounds heavier. Uh, but, you know, here you are. And it's, it's something that is very doable. I mean, it is doable. It is doable. Yeah. And I think that's, that's where people get scared when we mention the word veganism or, you know, the plant-based diet. I think people really uh, believe that it's centred around only the food, but it's not, as you mentioned um, in this article that I just read out, you, you also self-meditate, you, you know, you, it's about your well-being and taking care of your stress levels. All of these things really play a very important role in one's health. So not only about food, but definitely food, um, very, very important. Yeah. There is one more um, paragraph, if you don't mind, I would like to read to the viewers. After graduating from the Ekahi Ornish Lifestyle Medicine Program, it has been a solitary journey down the road toward, renew, sorry, toward renewed good health. Many of my con carnivorous cohorts abandoned me on the side of the road as soon as they got wind of my healthy lifestyle change. In their place appeared cohort members of a different persuasion. That is something that I hear a lot. And it's very um, yeah. unfortunate that some people are I don't know if the, I wouldn't, I don't want to use the word threatened, but feel almost uncomfortable when someone becomes vegan and sort of, you know, is getting healthier and healthier before their eyes. It sometimes makes people feel a bit um, awkward around Definitely. them. Yeah, yeah, and you mentioned exactly that. So, yeah, I, I was known to make a, a very excellent prime rib, which, you know, I don't have mm. the opportunity to do now because right. it's just it's uncomfortable for the people probably, but okay. um, I can still execute those types of dishes. Mm -hmm. However, it's here that I don't have the passion for. And I remember catering a party where I did a salmon dish, which used to be like, I could do it blindfolded with no problem, mm -hmm. but I caught myself after I was looking at it on the line, and I realized that because my heart wasn't in it, the whole execution that I normally would do didn't pan out, mm -hmm. and the fish got overdone. And usually, I, I have it spot on, mm -hmm. no problem. People yep. rave, but I could tell they're kind of like picking at it, and I just felt bad, but at the same time, I realized that I had stepped over into another world, yes. another type of preparation. Mm -hmm. And it was not just cooking, but it was a lifestyle. So for me, it's kind of slowly evolved that way. Yes. Um, not to say that, you know, in my travels, because in certain cases in Europe and in Japan, there weren't alternatives, so I had to compromise. Mm -hmm. But when I got back, I realized that if I'm going to maintain regimen, mm -hmm. I'm the one that has to exercise that discipline. Yeah, definitely. That, that's such an inter interesting point because, yeah, definitely when you see food being cooked, even in restaurants, um, you can tell how much love has gone into that dish. It can be a very neglected dish or it can just be something very simple that comes to the plate and you can see there's been a lot of um, effort put into that. So certainly, yeah, when you're cooking something that no longer um, – excites you I, I can't see it turning out perfect the way us chefs you know sort exactly. of expect from ourselves so yeah. totally understand <clears throat> well seeing as though we both um, share the passion for food and cooking yes. I do want to um, talk about the food today about vegan food and how how far we've come in you know such a short time I think about uh, when I transition to becoming vegan from uh, being vegetarian all my life throughout my childhood. I, that, that was 12 years ago. And 12 years ago, the, the vegan world was nothing like it is no, now. No, no. So things definitely. are definitely heating up and it seems to be the buzzword at the moment, all, this, um, you know, all these interesting products on the market that are coming out and make, making people sort of um, think about their choices a little bit more. So. Yeah, we're, we're living in very exciting times. That's, that's how I feel as a, you know, a food person um, because there's so many 
alternatives that technology is getting behind. There, maybe a couple of years ago, there was not a commercial cheese that was re reasonable, right. but now there is. Mm -hmm. And um, not that you want to fool people, but if people are so into having something similar and not, you know, like for example, burgers, mm -hmm. the two burgers, Impossible Burger and the um, the other. Yes, uh, Beyond, the Beyond. Burger. Mm -hmm. yeah, those two, I, I just did a, a class last night and I used the Beyond Burger. Of course, for two little patties like that, it was over $10. Um, mm -hmm. But amazingly, uh, scary yes. <laughs> because of the texture, the look, the taste. Um, yes. They've really done their homework. They've done exactly what the mm -hmm. public wants and beyond that because I don't think mm -hmm. people realized how close to the real thing you could get yes. and, st and have it be healthy. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so. Yes, all these products are the Beyond Burgers are yeah, also zero cholesterol. Uh, no uh, G GMO, they're, they're just, they're kind of a no-brainer, a no like you, you might as well give them a try, but you and I were talking before the show, and I, I also agree that they are still a little bit on the expensive side. Yeah. That, that'll um, eventually change yes. once you have more volume. Yes, more definitely, yeah. but it's great to see that people are enjoying them and uh, giving them a try, even the non-vegans. I, I mentioned on the show last uh, on the last show, 40% of the people buying those Beyond Burgers are non-vegans. Exactly. So definitely the times are changing, and in, in a good way, you know, people are more conscious about their health. There's more information out there that all points to a plant-based diet being the healthiest diet on the planet. And we're here to show you that it's not just alfalfa sprouts and, you know, boring um, brown rice and avocado. So Paul, I recently got back from my honeymoon. I'm happily married now to my lovely husband, Dave. Uh, thank you. And uh, we, we chose to go on the seven, seven night cruise around the islands, mm -hmm. around the Hawaii islands. Yeah, I've done that. So I was very um, looking forward to the cruise, but very keen to see how they were going to uh, feed me. Because I'd heard stories that, you know, cruises are not very vegan friendly. So Let's take a look at the first shot. I took some photos of the food so that I could share with everyone. All vegan, Paul. It's Chef amazing. Paul. Amazing. And, That's you know, amazing. they made pizzas for me. Any time of the day, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., they, they were happy to do a vegan pizza. Um, one day I felt like a dip, so the chef made me a hummus, a homemade hummus, just on the, you know, spur of the moment. Beautiful fresh salads. Mm -hmm. um, there was a fried rice and vegetable dish there, simple uh, crostini with some tomato and basil, all vegan, and none of these were on any menus. So have a look at the next one. Uh, that's what I've been doing <laughs> the past two weeks. Uh, I did have my cashew cheese making demo, and that went very well. I do have my other one tonight, my second one tonight, which, which will be attend. fun. Which you are going to attend. Thank attend. You very I'm much. very excited. <laughs> um, we are going to take a quick break, Chef, uh, and uh, come back to talk more about what kind of food you've been cooking and serving and teaching too, because uh, your food is just incredible, and I can't wait to try yours. So stay tuned and see you after the break. <laughs> え、2時 <笑> Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock for Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey where we take a look at cannabis as food, cannabis as medicine, cannabis and religion, and cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. So please join us to learn all about cannabis. Again, Wednesdays 
at one o'clock. I thank you. Welcome back to Lillian's Vegan World, where we talk about everything vegan and uh, the plant-based lifestyle. I'm very, very happy to have my wonderful guest, uh, Chef Paul Anishi, with me for part two of Veganize Your World. Uh, Chef Paul is very, very famous here on the islands, and you can catch him at some down-to-earth events. When's your next down-to-earth event? Have you got next a next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. So you, you can uh, find that information on Eventbrite if you're interested. Uh, chef Paul's an amazing chef and has become vegan in the past year and a half. So you're doing plant-based uh, cooking demos and classes. So definitely do catch uh, Chef Paul um, on the island. So getting back to the cruise, Paul, I do have two more photos that I would love to share with you about sure. the delicious food they made for me. So this is... Again, one of the restaurants, oh, sorry, I have the same photos there. The bottom left is a mushroom fettuccine that they made with, mm. with olives. And when they asked what I felt like, I said, pasta with olives and mushrooms. And that's, that's right. exactly what they made. It was just incredible, beautiful, you know, fresh mm -hmm. salad on the side. Really hungry. I don't know what that wine is doing there, naughty wine. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have one more. Um, the next slide is breakfast. So the interesting thing is I don't eat breakfast or lunch. I do what is called intermittent fasting, so I eat only four hours a day. But on this honeymoon, I did decide to indulge in the uh, breakfast buffet, and it was incredible. The baked beans happened to be vegan, not the ones at the buffet. They were not, but at the restaurant, they did make fresh uh, homemade baked mm. beans that were amazing. So I had to go back for them every uh, couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, totally, you look at that, it's a totally unhealthy diet. <laughs> Some, uh, you know, potato uh, croquettes and stuff, but everything vegan. And they did have, on the bottom left there, the photo is of the gluten-free and vegan uh, breads and yeah, products that you could ask them to toast for you. Mm. That Bloody Mary, again, I don't know what it's doing there. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow ended up on the photo. <laughs> but Chef Paul, you have also brought in some photos that I would love to share with everyone. So sure. let's have a look at your first one. Mm. Tell us a little bit about this. That is a um, kind of a shot we were doing at uh, Down to Earth promotional thing, mm -hmm. a fig salami that came from Greece. Wow. That looks very, very, very appetizing, I must say. Yeah, it's kind of different because you expect the salami taste, but the, the fig prominence comes out mm -hmm. pretty strong. Yes. And, well. Uh, I used to be a huge fan of figs. I used to love figs, but it was brought to my attention, Chef, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I did a recipe on my YouTube channel, Lillian Vegan. And the recipe was for a vegan mac and cheese. And the crusting, the topping that I put on the cheese was a vegan Parmesan cheese with uh, walnuts and dried figs. Mm. And all that was, you know, crushed up and topped the mac and cheese and then you know, baked it in the oven. It was delicious, and I used to cook it all the time. And then someone who saw the recipe did uh, comment and, and ask me whether I believed uh, figs were vegan or, vegan or not. To me, I was really kind of surprised and didn't really understand what she was going on about. So after delving into this, uh, whether vegans are, uh, sorry, whether figs are vegan or not, I did find some information um, that I would like to share sure. with everyone. So. A fig is more an inverted flower than it actually is a fruit. Okay, that's <laughs> interesting. That, and they require spe a specific kind of pollination that can only be uh, managed by fig wasps. They cannot be pollinated by the wind or bees. Mm. So the, the wasp, the female wasp, lays her eggs inside the fig and then dies. That's how it... Yes, that's how they pollinate the figs. So the fig ends up using an en enzyme called fixin. Uh, 
that breaks the body down, the body of the, the, the wasp that dies inside, breaks it down into protein. And this is where the question is whether you think they're vegan or not. So it's, bro it's not like there's a, you know, a wasp sitting in there looking very morbid and you know, almost alive. It's broken down. The protein is broken down, but the remnants of the wasp do remain in the actual fig. Yes. That I didn't know. Neither did I. I honestly didn't know. That's why I always, um, it's always interesting how, you know, the more you sort of continue on this journey of the plant-based diet, the more information and, and things you, you, come to, you come across that are quite interesting. So I, did, so I got this quote from the Daily, the Daily Meal, which is a sort of a vegan um, site on the internet. The fig ends up, uh, so it uses an enzyme called fixine to break the, the body into protein. Once the baby wasps are born, the males are often born without wings. So they crawl their way out of the, uh, out of the fig before fertilizing newly born wasps. The females emerge from the figs and then go on to spread pollen to other fig trees. And then the reproduction cycle starts wow. again. So. I'm interested. What do you think? Do you, th do you think there's still, you can consider figs to still be vegan or does it make you think twice about it? I don't know. Well, I know there's people that won't eat honey because of the, the bee. Yeah. It's but that's kind of a simple thing. Mm -hmm. what, what you're telling me, I've got to digest in <laughs> no, my mind because I that's know. more complex than I expected you to tell me. Yeah. And to be honest, I was so disappointed when I found out. I almost wished that I had not known so I could continue eating things because I yeah, find them to be very delicious. Yeah. Well, but, you know, like in Asia, people might say, well, what's a few insects? Especially <laughs> yeah. on a stick, you know, yes. and put a yes. little sauce, you know, yes. more protein. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's kind of, un now that you um, brought it to my attention, mm. I think that's kind of one of those where mm. some people might say, well, it doesn't bother me. Or yes. for some people, it might really yes. you know, be almost gross to think that mm -hmm. some, an insect has died in it and mm -hmm. then there's a fertilization process. Right. Yeah. But, uh, very complex little very fruit, complex isn't it? Very complex and like, something that mm. you know, it's not your normal everyday yes. <laughs> fact. Yeah. So food for thought. Um, some vegans do and some vegans don't. Totally up to you whether you want to continue, you know, consuming and other viewers out there. So, interesting. Good cocktail conversation. <laughs> yes. Let's have a look at another slide, Paul. This is a, a, a multiple shot of some of the students in my class. And uh, the lady on the right hand, uh, left hand side uh, just uh, ordered her own pineapple for Mm -hmm. I guess for a party. Yeah, it looks and, beautiful. Uh, basically, we make it so that every student gets a quarter pineapple and they're able to do the hands on portion of it. Great. And obviously, from the look on her face, I remember when she did that, she was so proud of yeah, it. Yeah, it, it looks really good. And she did really do it, uh, quite, a, quite a good job mm -hmm. for her first try. And um, the shots up on the right, the shot on the right hand side, upper, is. Uh, Part of uh, my chef training in Portland that I just went to, where uh -huh. we had some um, prep going on. Everybody participated in the preparation, and we all combined it together. And I think we're putting together some sort of a cold rice salad. Okay. Have a look at the next slide, Chef. There's more of uh, your yes, some more prep work there. What what kind of cream are you working with on the top left? Well, that was. My big aha moment because I had already always heard about this thing called aquafaba, aquafaba. Mm -hmm. and uh, basically it is um, the liquid from a can of um, garbanzo beans. Yes, or chickpeas. Which, yeah, mm -hmm. chickpeas, which I usually would throw away, and a lot of people do. Yep. And mm -hmm. to look at that kind of murky brown liquid mm -hmm. and actually think that it's going to turn out like. A yes. cross between whipped cream and meringue is mm -hmm. pretty amazing. But it is. I was the one assigned to do the whipping that day uh -huh. with the hand, hand mixer. 
And I actually saw this thing take shape before my eyes mm -hmm. and tasted it. Mm -hmm. And I was so shocked. <laughs> and I felt like I had stepped into another zone of you yes. know, creativity in the kitchen. And mm -hmm. so we did it in one of our classes. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg for me because I'm gonna, I can see myself spinning off in a lot of different directions. Definitely, yes. That. That Aquafaba um, works well in a lot of desserts and as you pointed out, meringues too, which is uh, quite amazing that you can make vegan meringues from the yes. chickpea water that basically ends up, you know, drained in the sink often. Yeah, there, there are little things that, you know, obviously because it's not um, a normal type of meringue, uh, if you were to do like a pavlova, for mm -hmm. example, where you yep. put it in the oven and you mm -hmm. bake it. Yep. That process would take about three hours to bake at low heat. Yeah, very low heat, yes. Yeah, and a lot of people might mm. just say, oh, well, forget that. Yes. I, uh, when I first started <clears throat> experimenting with that, I could not get it to work. And it just took so many oh. you know, trial and error for me to get it to the stage where it would bake, in, as you said, on the lowest heat possible for a very, very long time. And then the question is, was it worth it? <laughs> exactly. That's, <laughs> so, that's how I was Another thinking. thing, yeah. yeah. Let's have a look quickly at another one where sort of, oh, uh, that, that looks beautiful. What's the one on the bottom left, Jeff? That is, um, uh, the, these are the student uh, class examples. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did our version of a spanakopita using oh, phyllo pastry, which yep. is vegan. Yes. Um, smart. Love that, that stuff. Uh, Earth Balance Vegan Butter, butter mm -hmm. which works just like regular butter. Yes, and, and that a lot of people don't realize is vegan. <laughs> exactly, and then we took uh, spinach, uh, sautéed onion, uh -huh. and uh, tarragon, uh -huh. and a vegan feta cheese. Awesome, that, that looks amazing. Um, again, Chef Paul, it has been a pleasure having you on the show again, and I find that the time just disappears when I'm with you because we, we have so much to talk about and so much in common. Um, I thank you, for, you know, from the bottom of my heart for joining the show again and sharing your journey and your beautiful um, dishes with us. So I'll do it again. Huge mahalo. <laughs> Would love to do it again. And thank you also to everyone for joining in. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. So keep it on Lillian's Vegan World and mahalo. Have a great weekend.